case briefs and so much more ls data's got what you're looking for in a fascinating legal battle the leonard pivar company took the evans products company to court alleging a breach of both express and implied warranties in a sale of medium density overlay plywood the bone of contention centered around what constituted a valid acceptance of an offer leading to a dramatic case at the United States District Court for the District of Delaware in 1981. The saga unfolded when the Leonard Pavar Company claimed to have entered into an oral sales contract with Evans Products Company, which was subsequently denied by the latter. To formalize the agreement, Pavar forwarded a written purchase order omitting any mention of warranties or remedies. In response, Evans dispatched an acknowledgment comprising additional terms like disclaiming warranties and limiting liability if the plywood proved defective. Crucially, they made the contract contingent only if Pavar accepted these terms. At this stage, both companies approached the court seeking summary judgment. Much to their chagrin, the court dismissed their motions due to the existence of disputed facts, throwing both parties into a legal whirlwind. With this decision, the case was catapulted onto a broader stage now hinging on the provisions of the Uniform Commercial Code, UCC, and how to interpret the breach of warranties. Despite the denial of the summary judgment, the court admitted that clauses disclaiming warranties and limiting liability could materially alter agreements. But in a twist of events, the jury was tasked with determining whether Evans's acknowledgment contained terms that were not expressed in the initial oral contract between the two enterprises. Underpinning the essence of the court's decision was the application of Section 2, 207 of the Uniform Commercial Code, validating that mismatched terms in an agreement don't hinder the existence of a contract. This case served as a precedent, illuminating the three ways a contract could be formed under UCC 2, 207, through oral agreements confirmed in writing, written documents bearing differing terms, and conduct recognizing an existing agreement. Thus. Despite the contention surrounding the acknowledgement, the court concluded that a contract clearly existed between Pavar and Evans solely based on their conduct and accordingly proceeded to issue an order. This case not only highlights the nuances of commercial law, but also underscores the intriguing dance of legal titans, each striving to tip the scales in their favor. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.